And hello everyone, a warm welcome. It is day 31 since we've gone live um, on the Cappuccino Club social TV channel. We've gone live every single day, bar a few days when I had a dental procedure done. But we're back and this evening we've got an amazing um, lineup for you in the energy sector. So I'm Brigitte Limbanda from Cape Town in South Africa, and my amazing co-host is none other than Viola Manuel. Viola, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Brigitte. It's been a good day, day 31. I cannot believe it. It seemed like the first 21 days were taking forever, and then we had the 14 days added by the president, and those 14 days just seemed to be flying by. Um, I'm very excited about phase, you know, sort of... Um, level four of lockdown which starts on the first of may but um as we said yesterday our show today is going to be all about ladies in the energy sector we know that the energy sector is essential in terms of keeping us entertained um and keeping us online and keeping us in touch with everybody um during this lockdown period and one of the things we you know were always looking forward to is the fact that the that the energy we had sort of energy security so it's going to be fantastic to speak to some of the ladies in the energy sector very very impressive cvs and bios um an amazing woman i'm looking forward to our conversation today oh absolutely and you know um isn't it strange how the energy sector was at the forefront for the longest time um, and then along came COVID-19 and suddenly we didn't hear that much from the energy sector, but uh, nonetheless, and a very important sector to keep our economy ticking over. Um, and so, yeah, so we definitely, it's definitely not a sector that we can ignore. Absolutely. And I mean, really, if you think about it, if they had been rolling blackouts or anything had gone desperately wrong, you know, within the sector, we would have felt this lockdown a lot more than uh, many of us have. Um, and then again, I mean, it's not an easy sector to work in. There's a lot of change happening in the sector as well. There's a lot of challenge in that sec in the sector. So I'm really looking forward to engaging with our, host our guests today. Okay, absolutely. So let's not waste any more time because we've got three guests um, on the show and we do really want to spend some time chatting to them. So without any further ado, um, let's invite the ladies onto the show. Good day, ladies. Hello. Good Hello. day, Hello. <laughs> Rose, thank you. Uh, thanks, Mpai and Kazele. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really are excited to have a conversation with you today. But I'm going to ask, um, Rose, we'll start with you. Don't you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, the role you play in the energy sector? Okay, thank you so much, Paola. Um, my name is Rose Dai. I'm a sales representative for a cable and wire and optic fiber manufacturing company. I am also the deputy secretary for the AMEU Women in Engineering. I okay. think yeah, that is just a rough summary. Okay, great. Yeah. Rose, thank you so much. Um, Kizili, can we ask you to just... Tell us a little bit about who you are and the role you play in the sector. Okay, thanks, uh, Viola. Uh, my name is Fakazile Ngomiya Saba. 
Um, I work for the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality in uh, Port Elizabeth, Eastern Cape. Uh, I work for Electricity and Energy Directorate in Electrification Division. Uh, we actually, I'm actually a technologist responsible for project management of electrification projects where we actually supply electricity to the low income uh, people or, or less disadvantaged people in the Nelson Mandela Bay community. I am also the chairperson of the AMEU Women in Electricity Eastern Cape branch. I also I serve in the national committee with Rose. So yeah, that's that's me. Okay, thank you so Welcome much. Welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mbaile Tabele. I'm a senior engineer at ESCO. I've been working there for 12 years now uh, as a design engineering, as, as a design engineer for transmission substations. I am a professional engineer uh, with uh, registered with EXA. And I'm also a volunteer at EXA to help EXA to register other professional engineers. Uh, I also now I'm currently a student at WITS uh, doing MSc in electrical en engineering. My qualification is in BSc uh, electronics and I, I graduated from University of KwaZulu-Natal like years ago. Yeah, that's and I'm a mother of two girls who I am single parenting. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I just yeah. one follow-up question. Are you based in Cape Town with ESCOM or anywhere else? I, I'm country? based in Megawatt Park, uh, a substation engineering department in Megawatt Park. It was under technology, but now with a new structure, we are now under transmission. Well done. Thank you so much, ladies, for yeah. joining us. And um, I do want to just at this point, thank you, Landa, um, so much for having, you know, contacted you all and invited you to the show. And we're very excited. But I'm going to let Brigetti mm -hmm. kick off um, our discussion this evening. Yes, from me too, a huge, huge thanks to Yolanda Mabatu for putting together um, the ladies for the rest of this week as well and for organizing everything you shout out to you so can we start out with you um Mpai? how has the lockdown yeah. affected the electricity sector uh, as ele electricity sector in general because as you remember we have the generation transmission and distribution and for us to be doing this interview now it's because they're all operating we can never switch off eh? So, which means the men and women out there are still working, even as we speak, 24 hours. Otherwise, they wouldn't be us now communicating. So, uh, it has affected it uh, a lot, obviously, because they are support people like us. I'm in support because I'm a design engineer. I'm not operational. So, which means for us, because we we are not going, we don't, we cannot go to work. The lockdown will affect us. We are not essential as other operational staff. So we the the, the company then will be affected, like the the company itself and the sector in general. Even where, wherever wherever we are support staff, will have to be affected by lockdown. We cannot get permits to be at to be going to work because we are not necessarily essential. So which means. The projects, all the projects that are in the pipeline will be affected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Fekazile, how is it, how has, uh, have you been impacted by COVID-19? Okay, I didn't get that clearly. Can you please come again? How have you been impacted by COVID-19? Personally. Yes, you, you, you personally. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, for me, it has it has affected me. But I've been on maternity leave. Actually, I'm a mother of a three months old baby girl. So um, and the first time mom. <laughs> so 
<laughs> Thank you. So um, I've been on uh, maternity since December. I was supposed to go back to work now in April, just a, um, a week before the Easter, which is now it was already locked down, so I couldn't go back because like um, uh, like with Mpai, um, also not um, essential services. So my section is actually closed during lockdown, but uh, there are operational people to ensure that uh, people get power while they are locked down. Uh, so it has affected me personally because now I'm sitting at home. At the same time, there is a positive about it because I'm spending more time with my baby. So <laughs> that's the positive part. Otherwise, yeah, being at home and yeah, I, I was looking forward to go back to work and also to our, my plan was also to push my, um, re, uh, my EXA report to register with EXA and my all my information is at work. So I was like, okay, let me just go back so that I can sort out myself because my plan was to actually register this year. So now I cannot do that because everything that I need is at work, even though I've got my laptops and everything with me, but the information that I need to, to uh, compile is actually at work in my office. So that has a, that is a delay to me, but there's nothing I can do about it. So yeah, I'm just sitting at home and but watching my baby girl growing and developing is a good part <laughs> of it but yeah yeah that's it amazing that's a positive spin on um on the unintended consequences of COVID-19 and Rose yes. um, how has yeah a, a very nice one Rose how's COVID-19 impacted you in the energy sector okay because I come from a manufacturing company um, it has affected us uh, extremely badly because we are the support structure for the essential workers, you know, um, because we supply electrical cables that's needed for maintenance work and so forth. So um, we were caught in between um, trying to be there and support our customers, which is our ESCOM, your city powers, you know, your, your, your municipalities and also ensuring that our employees are also safe and protected from COVID-19. It, it's been a very difficult road, I must say. Yeah. Has, let, me, let me ask a question. Has there, has there been huge spikes in the electricity requirements now that people are working from home, watching TV all the time, um, just like constantly... Um, you know, just using electricity, has there been a huge spike in terms of the usage? Are you asking me? Yeah, Mpai, tell us. It sounds, it sounds, <laughs> yeah. The question is a question. <laughs> okay, yeah, though, you know, I'm not representing ESCOM, but uh, yeah, yeah, like you. from the knowledge I know, uh, even ESCOM promised that during the, the lockdown, there won't be any uh, uh, power, uh, power black like maybe load shedding mm -hmm. for obvious reasons that because you know the industries are the ones that use a lot of electricity and then we okay. at home yes we still use a lot of electricity but compare if it's us and them together it becomes worse but now that uh industries like i hope they're going to pay for my home bill because now my home bill is going to go up but <laughs> yeah and that yeah because yeah and that I, yeah. even though we have a lot of stuff and good thing is it's not winter yet so we're not you we are not using a lot of power for heating and stuff like that yet so i think it makes sense that we don't have uh outages now yeah mm -hmm. because the industries are most like manufacturers like she said manufacturers are not operating they are the people who consume a lot of electricity yeah, yeah. okay so there seems to be a, a balancing out then of, of the fact that we don't have all the factories and manufacturers mm. stepping electricity. Mm -hmm. um, yes. and, and just a comment, we will be uh, seeing a lot of employees sending their bosses bills for um, electricity. <laughs> I wish they do. <laughs> I wish they do because now <laughs> the whole the, the electricity bill really now is on on me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mine. Like, yeah. We all are the same page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just to add on, um, from what the information that I've received from our municipality within, I'm staying in the Val, so our municipality would be Mfuleni, 
um, they have very low energy consumption, you know, due to all the industrial um, mm. companies being closed. So which will essentially affect their revenue, you know? Mm. So, yeah, it's a bit bad for, in terms yes. of revenue yes. collection, yeah. Yes, mm. I think oh, yeah. That's, that's been a big factor, um, mm. even in terms of, you know, the next phase of lockdown and level four um, being introduced is really, you know, the decision around cigarettes, for example, is because municipalities and the government are losing out on such a huge tax um, uh, benefit. Um, mm. So there are lots, there's lots to consider, you know, in terms of the decisions yes. they're making for the country. Yes, correct. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Can oh, I absolutely. ask? Absolutely. Let me let me ask the next question. In terms of of the value chain in the in energy sector, the full value chain um, of essential workers and non-essential workers, in your minds, who do you think would go back on the first of May? Um, in terms of the value uh, chain, what are, what are certain sectors that would go back? Uh, let's ask uh, Rose maybe uh, first. Okay, I'd I'd say definitely the mining. The mining sector. I know in terms of manufacturers, there's only a certain percentage where we are allowed to go back. We can't, I think it's 20% where we can only, you know, go back up until, you know, we reach stage three, which will be 50% in addition to that. Um, yeah, operations and maintenance, I think they need to have more people that are back there in those sectors. Okay. Yeah. And construction. Okay. okay. And have, have your bosses and, and uh, department heads and supervisors, have they been sort of communicating with you guys in terms of what their plans will be from the 1st of May? On my side, yes, but um, my supervisor is not yet updated us. Uh, we're still waiting, but he's a person that um, communicates to tell us uh, what's going to happen. Uh, the last time he, told, uh, he spoke to us was like, okay, because we've got a WhatsApp group as a, as a, as a section. Then she, he informed us that, okay, we must continue to stay at home up until he gets uh, an update from the senior management himself. So I believe to date he has not received any update. As soon as he gets that i'm sure he will actually come back to us but from my point of view i i think that the construction side of of, of things should go back from the first of may because we also fall under construction in in, in the sense that as we do projects electrical projects but there's construction involved where there's um uh, excavation of holes and, and, and planting of poles and all that, installation of transformers and all that, that is that forms part of, of, of um, co construction. So, and those projects now are on the standstill and communities are suffering outside because they always look forward to get electricity. So if that is, com is coming to play, then we also have to go back to manage those projects and there's also budget involved because we get funding to do those projects and we've got time frames to actually spend that money so i'm, I'm sure they will consider mm. things like that and then decide as to whether who comes back or not okay so so even within the energy sector in local municipalities of course that you know you guys will also have discussions on on how you will actually bring in the resources that is required for mm. for level four um mm. lockdown let me ask a, a question yeah. In terms of, you know, everybody has sort of said COVID-19 is this huge game changer. Um, mm. It's changing the way we operate. It's changing the way we see the world. It's creating all this opportunity um, and so on. And it's definitely bringing about change. In terms of your, your sort of your frame of reference, have there been major innovations and creative thinking um, now that COVID-19 is here? Let's ask Mutai. Yes, uh, from my side, uh, we, we, I can't say it's a major innovation, but rather it's optimization of current resources. Eh? Because we are so used to contact. Like, you know, I go, I, when I'm doing my project, I have, a, I will have a project manager dot on the other, because at Megawatt Park, we are all there. You know, I can walk and go to the another block and then talk to the project manager. 
for if I need a line engineer, I can go. It's same floor. I just go. But now we have optimized the system of on like we we've been working from we have never stopped working from lockdown. We've been working from home, and then we've been. For me, I feel like it's efficient, even more than at work because it's open space uh, environment. It's easy to be distracted. But for me, I think optimizing the current tools that we have. You know, we've always have Microsoft uh, Teams, but we've never used it. We just mm. started using it now. I mean, on in our department, and then it has been great. You know, you want, and I've seen how efficient people can be, because. You, you don't have to wait for someone to be at their desk. You know, you just send an email and everything will be there. You'll get everything you need. And I, for me, I think I found, I found something. I think we had a treasure. It was hidden in COVID-19. Mm. Because now I feel like we're more efficient than when we are at the office. That's what yeah. I can recommend from our boss. From now on, let's just work from home. Because yeah. I see myself more efficient. I don't take a lot of tea breaks because i'm already at home <laughs> and then yeah. i just find myself working 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 i can't stop because i feel like now i'm enjoying my work better than when i'm yeah. at work because you know at work at work sometimes it's got other you know other issues that sometimes you don't feel like you want to work and then there's someone coming with this and that but now you're in your own space and yeah. then you're enjoying you're enjoying your craft as an engineer now you're enjoying being an engineer and yeah. with less interaction not that we need interaction but contact is still good but sometimes i think we had too much interaction <laughs> like just for lack of a better word but i fi yeah. i found it more efficient than when i'm at the office for me like I, it worked out better yeah rose do you do you have the same experience is it the same for you not at all for me i think it's a it's a work in progress <laughs> <There's> still <laughs> that needs to be done for us to be efficient at, at home. Um, I mean, we are, we are working with plants. You know, in the plant, you need people to be physically there mm. to maintain the machines and to supervise yes. and to make sure that everything goes smoothly. So we need to, now we are, you know, combining our heads and coming up with strategies as to how we're going to protect um, the people in the plants, how we're going to protect ourselves. But the people that can work from home, we, we are working from home. Currently, we've been working from home throughout um, the lockdown. But okay. it, it, it's a work in progress. A lot needs to, to be implemented. Yeah. But Kizili, yeah. how, how are you finding it? I know that you're having an absolutely amazing time playing <laughs> being with your beautiful three-month-old baby. <laughs> but um, you know, how how are you finding working from home? Do you find that you are able to you know concentrate for extended periods of time, or you know how how are you experiencing it? Um, in our section, uh, we cannot work at home at all. You can only do something in the office. There's actually nothing that you can do once you're at home. So it's not working for us at all. You're gonna have to be because we cannot. I cannot even connect to the server when I'm here at home. They, I've got, I don't, we don't have that um, uh, those resources where you are able to connect to the server because you would have to connect to the server to be able to access certain documentations to work on. But now when you're at home, boom, nothing. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing I can do when I'm at home. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Let me, if I let guess, me Elia, you should just yeah. change. I was just saying you should just change the employer. I was just saying Fagazile should just change the employer. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> Do you want to hire me there? Because <laughs> just saying, you know, yeah. we can access we can access the server from home. I'm just saying, yeah. like you know, yeah. those things are there. Just tell your municipality to pay for them yeah. to be. Available. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, can I, on a, on a, I know we we busy. Uh, like you know it's a lighter mm -hmm. note but I must tell you I think all of our guests say different things you know it works for some people to be at home it works it doesn't work for other mm -hmm. people you know it mm -hmm. works for some companies whereas other companies are a lot more security conscious so the idea of yeah. having staff using their own devices to tap into servers and tap into um, you know sort of confidential spaces um, techno mm. technological spaces is not something that the you know the executives mm. are comfortable with. So I think it's really, really just almost about everybody, you know, your own space and and so on. So 
I yes, know yeah, that's true. Cricket is um, keen to to weigh in on this discussion um, because we've been having guests all the time, and everybody sort of has their own view. Okay. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I just want to let Rose know, Rose, if you um, are still able to hear us, please use the same link to rejoin us. We've only got um, five minutes left. So if you are okay. able to join us for another few minutes, please, please do so using the exact um, same link. And so, ladies, have there been any out of the whole period now that we've been in lockdown with COVID-19? Has there been any, been any innovations um, and creative thinking as an indirect consequence of COVID-19? Um, Pai, can we ask you first? Yes, I think that's what uh, Viola asked earlier. Yeah, it's basically for me, I cannot say there's been a, a big innovation. It's just what I've realized is the current tools that we have, they've been optimized. Half, like all of what I'm using now, even accessing the server from home is the first time I do it now. I never did, I've been working for, for as an, a design engineer for 12 years. It's the first time I do it. And it's tools that are there that are being paid for every month, but we never use them. So I found it very efficient that like it, it, as a way forward, you know, sometimes you miss meetings. Maybe if I have a meeting in Cape Town, I don't go because, I, you know, we are used to contact. I don't go because I can't make it because I have a meeting in maybe in Devon. So because of that, now I can help. While I'm in meeting in Devon, if the times are not exactly the same, I can just hawk into my, my computer, have a, a signal, and then I can have meeting anywhere. Yeah. There's no need for us to actually be stuck up and, Unless if you have to go to site, because at the end of the day, because we work, I do uh, substation in, substation designs. And I have to be on site. That's when only I really have to travel. But for meetings, for me, after I've seen that, I really we can share, we can do everything as if you are in a meeting. There's no need of contact anymore. That's what I I, I realize that optimizing the tools that we have can be very efficient. Mm -hmm. That's and what I I learned. I think that's for moms. For single moms, all the sort of traveling and the, the difficulty yes. of yeah. kids and so on. This is such a great, it's yes. really been one of the yes. unintended consequences of COVID-19, yeah. Yes, wow. yes. I think a lot of people didn't realize how much we could do um, online and how effective meetings <gasps> can be. And you can literally yes. go from one meeting to another um, yeah. without having to travel. Yeah. With, without, it's with, cost, without It's a huge cost yeah. saving. Mm. without wearing heels. Do you know you can have a meeting at home without wearing heels? <laughs> like, it's yeah. the greatest innovation. Absolutely. I think, that, I think that's a big, big win for women. You know, it's like, you don't have to, have, you don't have to wear heels. But no. By the same token, I've also heard women saying that they don't feel quite as productive if they don't dress up at home um, <laughs> as they would normally for the office, you know, but to each their own, whatever works, whatever works for you yes, is, yes. is great. <laughs> right. Ladies, do we have to wrap up? Um, I, can we have a final word from each of you before we do? Yeah, I think, I think, Brigitte, maybe just bringing in the theme, it's, it is Freedom Day today. Um, you know, it's it's the strangest thing because now that we're under lockdown, we didn't even, you know, some people didn't even realize it's a public <laughs> holiday because, you know, usually yes. when you're working and working, you look forward to that public holiday to sleep in and, you know, do all the things that we're now doing as a matter of habit almost. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, just in terms of Freedom Day um, and, and you know, the history of our country and, and what we're going through now with COVID-19 and the pressure on our president and his cabinet what exactly does freedom mean to you now? You know, with the lockdown and not being able to actually move around, what does freedom mean to you, Rose? Oh, Rose, Rose has had to jump off. Um, Fakazili, mm. what, what does freedom mean to you? Uh, I think um, freedom for me, um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's good because now we are able to, to, to even interact like this. And, and and share uh, our 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 
I mean, uh, what what were our experiences in terms of the COVID nineteen, and and the fact that we can we can hear what is happening around, and then the updates even on the COVID nineteen, and be aware of what's going on so that we may be able to plan and 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 and, and see what can we do for for uh, to to save our lives and our families. So yeah, for me that, that that's basically that. Okay. Okay, Zila, can I ask yeah. you? Has has there been a shift in what you think is important in terms of freedom, as Viola said? Um, now that we've we've been in lockdown, has your mm. perception of of what freedom entails changed? No, not really for me. It does not change anything because we are still free, even though we are in this pandemic. And I believe that it's just a matter of time before we are able to to, to get back to our normal ways of doing things again. So for me, there's, there hasn't been any change. Yeah. So that comes back to, you know, our yeah. conversation that we've been having, Viola, about pivoting. You know, That's so instead right. of having mm -hmm. in-person interaction and meetings, we've been able to do this online. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Pai, what is yeah. what is Pai, how about you? Okay, for me, uh, you know, I'm old enough. I've seen apartheid, I've seen uh COVID-19 like you know I know that you know I'm big I'm old you know like yeah <laughs> and for me being a woman a black woman in South Africa being an engineer for me is a symbol of freedom because some my grandmother wouldn't be an engineer being a black woman yeah now I sit with men I tell them no this cannot be done like this I use my brain, they use their brain, and I have that freedom. I do it in here even when it's, it means I'm writing an email to explain some issues or where they explain and interact with men, white men. Well, before, I wouldn't even dream, my parents, parents wouldn't dream of that. For me, COVID-19 doesn't do anything, doesn't intimidate me. As long as I'm safe, I know it will go like any other obstacle I've had in my life. It will go, and... I'm still enjoying my freedom in a, in my house, and I enjoyed my freedom because I know we have we have had a lot of drama in the world, and especially as we've seen some of the things some we've had, and we are conquering every day. So, COVID nineteen is not take my freedom away. Mm. It's it's not even close. Eh? Mm. 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 But you, you know, um, Bigetti for for and to the ladies, you know, for me, freedom is about choice. As soon mm. as you have mm. choice, um, you have freedom. And then I think of, mm. for example, yeah. the people Fikazili mentioned, the, um, you know, people who are in a less privileged position than us, they have less choice and mm. therefore they have less freedom, yeah. um, you mm. know, if you start looking yes. at it like that. And True. so, yes. you know, mm. I think the message for me, just talk, I, I had a few other sessions today, the, the general theme is, Whatever level of freedom you have, appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. the freedom. Yeah, I mean, oh, you know? I fully agree. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, just, yeah, just appreciating what we have. I think that's that's freedom. Yes, that's yeah. correct. <laughs> Ladies, thank, thank you so you. much. It was lovely <laughs> having freedom. you as guests mm. today. And uh, it's a pity we lost our connection mm. with with Rose. But Rose, thank you so much for joining us as well. Yeah. And uh, we hope to welcome you back at some time in the future again. So thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so, thank much. You thank you so much. much. Thank you it for having a... us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you're you. welcome. Okay, then. Bye-bye. That was amazing. Great to hear from ladies um, on the ground in the energy sector. But we've Absolutely. got some more. What's up for tomorrow, Viola? So tomorrow's going to focus mainly on the SMME sector. Um, SMMEs within the energy sector. We're really going to be talking to some of the new the business owners and, and small business in the energy sector, just figuring out how COVID-19 has affected them. So I'm looking forward to that. We've got a whole new set of um, guests with us. And, of course, just a reminder that our show will air at 3 o'clock tomorrow, not 7 o'clock, because um, it is Tuesday. 
It is Tuesday, so we'll see you tomorrow a little bit earlier, but nonetheless, looking forward to our conversation with some more ladies in the energy sector. So from me, Bridgette Limbanda in Cape Town, it's goodbye for now. And just a quick reminder that the Cappuccino Forum does not support disinformation, misinformation, or any fake news with regards to COVID-19. Have a great evening further, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.